while while we've got you on the line, um, could you just talk talk to us a little bit about kind of uh, uh, some of what you do um, here in Alabama? You, you're a uh, you represent uh, the United Mine Workers of America. What district is it? That's District Twenty. District Twenty. More or less the southeastern U.S., basically uh, Tennessee, North Carolina, South, um, and that, that part of the country. But most of the miners are here in Alabama. Okay, and and so uh, again, your name is Jack Jacobs, and, and full disclosure, uh, Jack Jacobs is a partner of Maples Tucker and Jacobs, and they are a sponsor of this program, and we really appreciate their support. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about kind of what what it looks like day to day? Um, fighting for these, uh, fighting for these folks that, that are down in the mines and, and, um, you know, having, having these sorts of issues, like what, what, you know, what are some of the things that you've seen, you know, presumably you've got some like, you know, amazing stories and some really sad stories and, and, you know, can, can you just kind of talk to us about, um, about what it's like doing what you do? Right. It, it's, it's good for me. I, I enjoy what I do being able to work with these guys. I'm, you know, I'm very proud to, you know, partner with the mine workers because I know they've got a an important job fighting for their for their guys. But there's only so much they can do as you know union members. Uh, a lot of the stuff in you know, involves court, uh, especially when these uh, uh, men and women get hurt down in the mines. Uh, mines are, you know, uh, very, you know, dangerous places uh, under the best conditions. A lot can go wrong. Um, and people get hurt, uh, whether that's just typical, you know, a back injury uh, or, you know, rock falls, uh, you know, it's, uh, or, you know, dust inhalation uh, causing black lung. So, um, you know, there's just so many ways people can get hurt down there. And it's important these, you know, the miners have an advocate in the court system to make sure that they're taken care of because, some, you know, many of these injuries are, you know, catastrophic and life changing. And they need to make sure that, you know, that their rights are, you know, fully protect it because you know the company's going to have an attorney for them <laughs> so right. it's really important for the uh, injured worker to have an attorney on their side as well absolutely that yeah i think that's incredibly important um you know one of the one of the reasons that um one of the reasons that unions are so important is because of the kind of power imbalance uh, that is inherent between the employer and the employee uh, relationship and so having a union and collective bargaining um that can you know that obviously increases the leverage uh, that that workers have and it makes them able to um, you know it makes them able to afford uh, afford things like attorneys where they wouldn't normally be able to uh, so uh, Jack if you've got time could you stay on the line for another segment sure be glad to okay all right uh, so we're gonna be talking some more to uh, Jack Jacobs about uh, you know his work for the United Mine Workers uh, here in Alabama stay tuned this is the Valley Labor Report a long-haired preachers come out every night I try to tell you what's wrong and what's right but when asked about something to eat, uh, they will answer in voices so sweet. You will eat, you will eat by and by, in that glorious land in the sky, way up high, work and pray, but live on hay. Uh, you get by in the sky when you die, that's the lie. All right, welcome back to the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison, holding down the fort by myself this morning. Uh, David is out fighting for the working people of Alabama, so thank you for that. Brother David, wishing you safe travels. On the line, we have Jack Jacobs. He is a partner uh, at the law firm Maples, Tucker, and Jacobs. They represent, uh, or or, uh, uh, Jack represents the United Mine Workers of America, uh, District 20, uh, in the southeastern region, mostly in Alabama. <clears throat> He's also a personal injury, uh, personal injury attorney. So I- even if you're not a United Mine Worker, uh, you know you can you can call his number. Uh, Jack, what's the number that they can call? Yeah, you can call our office number at 205-322-2333. Uh, uh, glad to help uh, anybody. We do represent people all over the state of Alabama and. Uh, we do a lot of work for coal miners, but other other union members, other workers too. So it's uh, a variety of, of 
of folks. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so, can you t- tell me a little bit about what what brought you into uh, kind of that line of work? Um, you know, uh, what made you want to like be a lawyer and then be like a personal injury attorney for uh, you know for for workers and 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 for unions and and things like that. You know, um, I've always, you know, been a big supporter of the union cause. Uh, you know, when I, my first job I had at a high school, I went, to, uh, they were doing the orientation, and my first question to ask them was, well, how do I join the union? So it's uh, it's always been something that I've, I've felt passionately about. Um, so going through law school, learning more about, you know, union representation and how to, you know, do that type of work. And I was just fortunate enough to uh, start working with the, my partner, Sam Maples, who did a lot of work with the uh mine workers uh, in the past and uh, we just uh, over the years have just built a really good relationship with the uh, with the men and women of the union and so uh, we're you know we're knowledgeable that area we we know how this stuff works and we know how the mines work and so it's kind of just built on our experience and uh, our reputation I guess and you're from Alabama Uh, yes okay well, that's fantastic. I, you know, I really appreciate uh, the work that um, the work that you do, uh, uh, you know, for uh, for the working people of Alabama and for the mine workers in Alabama. Uh, I'm sure they do. Uh, it, it's, re- you know, like you were talking about, it's really important that uh, that the workers have competent advocacy because obviously the company is going to. <laughs> so. Um, earlier Absolutely. in the program, I was talking about uh, I was talking about. Um, wage theft with uh, w- with somebody who's running for city council here in Huntsville, and um, you know I'm sure that you know that that wage theft accounts for more dollars stolen from people in America than all property crime combined, and yet there are almost no resources devoted to fighting um, wage theft proactively. Uh, there are there are virtually no uh, resources devoted to fighting it proactively. Um, and even and, and still very very little, uh, even fighting it when workers know that they can claim it for themselves. Um, do you have any experience uh, in 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 that kind of thing? I know that you know wage theft is something that generally kind of happens more in those are like lower wage uh, service industry jobs. Obviously, that's not going to be happening near not going to be happening nearly as much in union contexts, but. Um, do you have you know? Do you have any kind of thoughts on that, and like what it would take to set up a system that can effectively fight wage theft proactively? Those are good questions. I think you know it starts with you making sure you're keeping track of your time and and you know knowing what it is that you're supposed to be con- compensated for. You know when you start working for the employer, you know putting on that protective equipment, uh, getting dressed, I mean, you know, in the plant, you know, making sure, you know, that's, you know, that's all compensable employment. So, um, you know, it starts with a little knowledge on the employee, but, you know, we don't, I don't think that those employees necessarily have a good uh, understanding of that. Mm. Um, And so the the employers are are certainly, (laughs) certainly okay with, uh, you know, taking advantage of the ignorance of the employee. Right. Um, um, A lot of times lawyers do get involved. Right. They often don't under they don't the, the employees don't really have a good, good understanding of their rights, and then further, um, they often don't have a good standing to, <laughs> you know, even if they did understand the rights that they have theoretically. Um, like John mentioned, we're an at will employment state, and so uh, it can be very difficult for workers to exercise the rights that they do have, um, you know, on paper. So right, think- and that's why I think you know, union membership is so important. You know, having, you know, getting outside the out will where you have rights where they can't just terminate you right. or exercising, you know, your legal rights. They have to go through, you know, they just can't openly retaliate like that. So right. um, I think union membership is very critical. Um, and, and we would like to see more of it in Alabama. Certainly. Uh, for sure. Certainly. And, it, and, and you know, that is, I mean, if, there, if union membership could only get you a just cause firing clause, in your contract, you know, that would be worth it because otherwise you live in a regime where you are in, you know, we as Americans, we, we like to consider ourselves like freedom loving people. We hate authority. We hate the government. We hate people telling us what to do. But the majority of our waking lives we spend under the thumb of an employer who can who can at any moment just 
let us go and make us like homeless and poor and uh, you know for for no any reason or no reason at all under the employment regime that we have in Alabama. But if you have a union job and you put and you're able to get secure a just cause firing clause in your contract, then they have to have just cause <laughs> to get rid of you. And I think that's a reasonable thing for. Um, employers to have to, sh to, to show to uh, to justify putting somebody out on the street um, and and that's not something that that is not something that you're gonna get without a union and uh, you know you mentioned wanting to see more of that in Alabama and Alabama used to have the highest union density in the United States in uh, in the 40s but um, you know there there's obviously a a an organized assault on organized labor uh, by politicians and by oligarchs and and executives and, and, and things like that in Alabama and so we're down to um, you know w we definitely have a lower than the national average but we still have the highest in the southeast which isn't you know it, it's not nothing no it, it's not but you're right they, you know, the companies you know push against this hard and a few years ago actually Bob Murray bought one of the large coal mines in Alabama in Jefferson County. You know, and, and he pledged, you know, at that time that he was going to break the union there. Um, and, and thankfully, that you know, they're still going strong. They've got some good, young, new leadership. I'm very excited to see them involved. Um, I think, you know, young leadership is key to have, you know, you know, transferring that knowledge to the to the younger guys and, and, and getting making sure that they understand the importance of the union. Right. Because it, it's, it's about wages. It's about, you know, making sure you're getting paid for what you do. It's about making... Uh, Sorry, and, and, and but safety is so important. You know, people get hurt on the job, and they're not getting their rights. You know, they're not getting their workers' comp. They're not getting taken care of. Right. And the unions play a very important role in that. And, uh, so yeah, you mentioned the importance of, of transitioning leadership to kind of the younger generation, and I'm not sure if you've been able to uh, listen to our interviews with the um, with the machinist union local S6 who. Uh, wrapped up their strike successfully a few weeks ago against uh, General Dynamics, <clears throat> Bath Ironworks. And uh, that was one of the things that they remarked on. I, I talked to uh, an older brother who had been a member of that local for 46 years before it was affiliated with the Machinist Union, actually. And, um, and he talked about how inspired he was to see the young people leading the charge on this. And, um, you know, Max Alvarez, uh, he is the host of the Working People's Podcast. He did an interview with one of those young leaders, uh, Jamie Belfleur. And, um, you know, she talked about how important it was for young people to be involved and how proud she was of the other young people in her union that were involved in, uh, you know, I mean, leading this strike. They were leading demonstrations and, and making speeches and, and leading, uh, you know, ringing bells and laying the hammers the hammer down in, uh, in, in demonstrations during their lunch break, impromptu demonstrations during their lunch breaks with hundreds of people. Um, you know, so that's a really inspiring story, that, one that you don't hear often, uh, you know, the largest private sector strike in America in 2020 was successful. They got everything that they were asking for and more, and it happened with uh, you know with youth leadership, and uh, and and so that's something that I'm that I'm 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 I, I I'm really heartened by, and uh, and I definitely need to talk to you sometime off the air about getting some of those uh, new young leaders from the United Mine Workers down south uh, on the program to talk about what they're doing. It sounds like they they've got they've got a kind of similar dynamic there. It is. I mean, you see a lot of the older miners retiring just as, you know, um, these, I guess, the tail end of the baby boom kind of, you know, working their way out of the mines. And so you see these young guys come up, but they haven't experienced um, a lot of them, you know, the hardship, you know, the, the, the fights in the 70s, like you're talking about in Harlan, and then they had the fights here, mm -hmm. um, and, and they just don't know. Right. And so you, you need people, young people coming in and saying, and recognizing how important the union is, um, you know these these benefits and wages just didn't happen just because the company's benevolent. I mean, right. <laughs> that's not the way it works. Yeah, that's you know that's something that like I I harp on seems like almost every week, but um, the rights, the few rights and freedoms that we have in and from the workplace in America. Um, People, you know, like you said, people take them for granted because this is the way the world is. People think or people just kind of assume that or they don't really think um, 
but but the kind of base assumption is that this is the way that it's always been. This is the way that it, that it's always going to be, and this is just the natural order of things. And that is so far from the truth. The the few rights and freedoms that we have in and from the workplace took movements of millions of working people across the country willing to put their lives and livelihoods on the line, on the picket line, and, and, and it took people dying. Like, people were murdered for the rights that we have today. And, um, and, and you know, like, that's one of the things that we want to do is educate people about that and educate people about the way that you defend these rights is not by, you know— just going along with the status quo or not doing anything and just assuming that it's going to be that way in the future, the way that you protect these rights and the way that you get more rights, because you deserve to have more than you do now, the way that you get more rights is by organizing with your brothers and sisters on the job and fighting for it. It's not going to happen. I think that's a... No, what were you saying? Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly right. Uh, Wayne Flint has got some really good histories in some of his books about union activity in Alabama. If you ever get a chance to read those, and uh, just to, you know how violently uh, you know, the company owners fought with with the government's help. You know, mm-hmm. National mm-hmm. Guard called in to break in strikes, and you know basically have you know <laughs> shootouts with the with the union members. Yeah, uh, and really, it took until Roosevelt came to power or got elected, I guess. Um, to put a stop to that. And that really is where you see the huge spike in, in uh, union membership in Alabama was after Roosevelt came in and, you know, put a put a stop to the strike breaking from the government. Right, right. Um, we're coming up on a break. We've only got one more segment. Do you do you have time to stay on the line and, and, and chat with me uh, for the last segment here? Sure. Okay. Glad to. All right. Uh, so we are talking to Jack Jacobs. He's an a, he's an attorney, a partner at uh, Maples Tucker and Jacobs, representing working people uh, in the southeast in the state of Alabama. Uh, stay tuned. We've got one more segment. This is the Valley Labor Report. You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. <laughs> Welcome back to the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison, holding down the fort myself today. On the line, we've got Jack Jacobs. He is a partner at Maples, Tucker, and Jacobs, a law firm representing the United Mine Workers of America, District 20. It's in the southeastern United States and Alabama. Uh, they also represent other workers uh, in personal injury or, you know, um, cases like that that come up on the job. Uh, they're a sponsor of the show. So if you're having problems in your workplace, uh, then you should give them a call. They represent workers all over the state of Alabama. And, uh, Jack, where, where's the best, uh, best, best place that they can reach you at? Uh, you can either call us. Uh, we have a toll-free number at 855-617-9333. Or you can email us uh, inf- at uh, info at mtnj.com. All right. Uh, so either th- way, we can get back to you and, and help you out. Can, uh, what, is the, what is the dynamic um, when a worker is not represented by a union and they've got like a question? Um, you know, I, 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 I'm assuming that you've got some kind of special relationship with the United Mine Workers. And so, uh, you know, there's some kind of direct line there. But what if there's, what if there's a worker up here in North Alabama that is having issues on the job, or maybe they were injured, or maybe they're worried about um, their rights being violated on the job, uh, and they wanted to call you. Like, what does that look like? Uh, is there like, do you have like a? Uh, is the first consultation free, or or like what kind of what would that process look like? Look like if somebody were to give you a call from up here? Yeah, I mean, you know, we we don't charge the initial consultation, um, and really, you know, most of the stuff we do is um, we, we charge, you know based on whatever money we're able to help the, the, the worker recover, I guess. But, um, you know, a lot of the stuff now with COVID is you know, done remotely anyway. So mm-hmm. a lot of times we're able to do stuff over the phone, uh, communicate. Um, but if we need to you know, meet people uh, around the state, we do that as well. So it's just, uh, but, you know, in, in these times, it, traveling is not maybe the best idea. So we just, uh, 
are trying to accommodate and use different uh, tools like Zoom or you know just simple phone calls just to right. help these people and give them the advice they need and, and try and you know make sure they do have their rights protected. Fantastic, uh, and, and we appreciate that here on the Valley Labor Report. Um, when we were uh, before the break, we were talking about kind of. Um, like how people actually got these rights, and you talked about uh, Wayne Flint has some some interesting books about like that that, that kind of illustrate just how bloody um, labor organizing in Alabama was. How there were shootouts between the National Guard and the mine workers, um, and uh, and you know like people, it's amazing that something like that can happen, and like people just have no idea about it. Um, uh, another book that I'm constantly recommended that I'm really excited to finally start reading, hope, hoping to start reading that here in the next couple of months, is uh, Hammer and Ho, uh, which is by Dr. Robin Kelly, about uh, black Communist Party organizing in Depression-era Alabama. Uh, th- there were, like, black sharecroppers that, that started to organize um, with, uh, you know, it was incidentally with the Communist Party, and um, they were able to win a lot which you would not imagine, uh, you know, <laughs> like a, a black communist party in Alabama being successful, but it was. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and actually, um, Lee Baines III, he is a, uh, a Southern rock artist from Birmingham, the Birmingham area, Lee Baines III and the Glory Fires. Uh, their next album, I've been talking to him, their next album is going to be about labor organizing in Depression era Alabama. Uh, so I'm, Real, you know, there, there. I've got a whole lot of whole lot of content that I'm going to be taking in about that period in Alabama. Um, but uh, d- you know, presumably you've read some of that stuff that that Flint has put out. Um, can you talk? Can you talk a little bit about some of that? Yeah, I think one thing that's always struck me was the fact that uh, the my workers in Alabama have always been integrated. Um, they've been active in the state since uh, you know before the 1900s. Um, and they always had uh, black membership in a, in a very, you know, segregated Alabama. Yeah. Um, you know, just because that was the, you know, was the easy way for the um, companies to fight wages. Just segregate the mines and keep, you know, um, you know, keep one race out or the other and just mm-hmm. to drive down wages. And, and the mine workers, you know, <laughs> wouldn't do it. So and that, that's worked to the benefit. Uh, and I think that's, you know, a good thing. But they've, it's always been, uh, I say always, you know, back then, you know, it would be a um, racist cry against the union that they were integrated and try and, you know, um, fight, fight them on that uh, front as well. Right. And that's, that is, that was not common in the 19, in the early 1900s to have integrated unions. Integrated unions did not start becoming the norm until the CIO surge of maybe the 20s and 30s um, and 40s. Um, and, and so, you know, the fact that, that Alabama's mine workers were integrated um, that far back really kind of speaks to the forward thinkingness of that union. And, and, and just to kind of illustrate how not the norm that was, there's a James Baldwin quote uh, about how... Um, you know, uh, white unions don't fight for us. Um, white, uh, uh, you know, white institutions don't fight for us. Like, why should we fight? You know, why should we fight for them? And, 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 and you know, like that was a that was a big issue in, in the black community uh, back then is that they were not allowed in the white unions. Uh, they they had to have their own unions. And of course, when you've got a white union going out on strike, why would the black union go out on strike with them? And if the black union doesn't go out on strike, then, uh, well, the, the white union strike is not going to be as successful, and it's a way to divide up the workers and help the uh, and, and, and help the boss. And, and, you know, they still do that to a certain extent today. We can see that with the Smithfield um, chicken, chicken plant in, uh, in North Carolina. On Means TV, they've got a good documentary called Union Time about that organ- organizing drive there and how they, they tried to use uh, racism to, um, you know, put a wedge between the black workers and the Hispanic workers and the white workers so that they wouldn't come together. And they were, fortunately, they were able to fight that and come together and, and win a union and, and win a good contract. But um, that, that is really amazing about the mine workers in Alabama. That, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think that's uh, you know speaks to the you know the, the solidarity of the union and just their their desire to make sure that everyone you know moves forward together on those things. 
Absolutely. So it, it's still, you know, the mine workers still, still are have a very large African American uh, component, which is not the same uh, for most the large or the rest of the country, really. Right. Right. Uh, we've been talking to Jack Jacobs. He's a partner at the uh, Maples Tucker and Jacobs uh, Law Firm, and um, and he's given me a lot of he's given me a lot of stuff uh, that, that that I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look into. And 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 Jack, if it's all right with you, I'll be talking to you offline about um, maybe getting in touch with some of the younger leadership of the United Mine Workers in Alabama, and gonna be trying to get in touch with um, maybe Wayne Flint. To, um, to maybe get him on the show and talk about some of this stuff because I think that uh, that sounds fascinating and, it, and it's just in our, you know, that, that's right right down our alley uh, here on the Valley Labor Report. Uh, so, Jack, thanks for, uh, thanks for taking the time and, and keeping me company today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed it. All right. Uh, folks, this has been the Valley Labor Report. You can find us on the Internet. We'll see you next week. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We appreciate your time today. Uh, if you want to see what we're up to throughout the week, get our snide quips about the news of the day, then uh, you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Valley Labor Report. Uh, we're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore A-L. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That is spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments throughout the week. Uh, and we also upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So uh, you can see if we are on your listening platform of choice, go to thevalleylaborreport.transistor.fm slash subscribe. And if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air, then consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report.